Hello, this is Xbox Ahoy, and this is the M8A1 bonus footage. I find myself blessed with a little bit of spare time as I'm waiting in for the postman to deliver Grand Theft Auto 5. And so rather than sit in the corner and weep softly to myself for uh, lamenting the fact that I don't have the game yet, I thought I'd do something productive and actually uh, get some of this bonus footage out of the way. Of course, as I'm recording this, GTA 5 could come at any time! It's exciting! But in the meantime, let's answer some questions. Now these ones are from the last bonus footage, and for the next bonus footage I'll take comments from this video. I mean, yeah, I know, it's not the cleanest of arrangement, especially with uh, the fact that I've not been keeping up a regular schedule with these things, but... It works, it works. These are bonus videos. I've been focusing on the, the main videos from the main channel, you know that. Anyway, first question. Orpheus Firebrand asks, Stuart, a serious question for you. The backlash from the DSR-50 ballista nerfs were severe, and it garnered negative media attention. What are your thoughts on the situation, and how do you think this will affect the game's community? Ah yes, for those who don't recall, a few weeks ago, well, I'm not sure precisely when it was now, but they nerfed the bolt-action sniper rifles. And of course, the Call of Duty community being what it is, there were some vocal, uh, shall we say, complaints. There are a lot of people who are very passionate about sniping, and especially the bolt actions, to the point where there are whole communities and activities such as quickscoping built up around them. And of course, any potential disturbance to this is met with a great deal of resistance. And what we saw was a few people that were, shall we say, more than mildly perturbed by it. I think uh, David Von der Hart endured a few death threats uh, amongst a few other nasty comments on Twitter and the such like. Now obviously this isn't an ideal situation, and the people who send messages like this aren't terribly nice people. I don't think anybody's really sort of defending them, you know, but it's a difficult issue to address really, because the internet gives you uh, this veil of anonymity and it's like being a heckler in a crowd, you've got almost this sort of carte blanche to shout out whatever you want without repercussion. And so when you've got a contentious event, like the nerfing of the bolt action sniper rifles, and a large, large crowd of people that it, you know, either affects or is broadcast to, then of course you, you're occasionally going to get people who say incredibly hateful things. I don't think these issues are particularly specific to the gaming community, I think there are, there are nasty people wherever you go. But when you combine, like, a large-scale passionate group of people, you're always going to have some conflicts and games and, well, pretty much anything that has a fandom is going to inspire kind of uh, these sort of conflicts at certain times. And like I mentioned, it's a very difficult problem to fix. Because in order to tackle these sort of anonymous voices, you either have to force them to sort of break that anonymity and, you know, sort of cast them into the light of their own identity, or, I don't know, I don't know, there's no really sort of good solution to it. I think it's nice to have a space like the internet where you don't have to use your real name, you don't have to use your real face, you can be anyone, anything you want to be. But maybe someone needs to come up with a, a way of tracking reputation, even if it's only for single personas like a Twitter account. And then you could have maybe like a karma score linked with any given account. You start off at zero, and then we can have controls for other people to sort of rate interactions, you know, like positive or negative or whatever. So if you're a, you know, if you're a pleasant person and you have a lot of positive interactions with people, you'll get a positive score. If you're, if you're nasty to people, then you'll get a negative score. And then we can give people who want to sort of control the, or filter the responses they get, we can give them the option to sort of filter out people of negative karma, or, you know, or we can filter out new accounts, stuff like that. I mean, this does have some intrinsic issues, it's not a perfect solution, but it's, I think it's better than, you know, pursuing legal action against some random teenager in Kazakhstan who's posting hateful comments. <laughs> no offence to Kazakhstan, by the way. And I think it's certainly better than sort of mandating that people use their real names. But having like a, a karma score or a, a reputation linked to a persona, that could be one solution. Anyway, I, you, di you didn't ask for a solution, did you? Uh, as for how I think it will affect the gaming community, it's difficult to say. I think it will affect the gaming community in the same way that it affects all internet communities, because it's, it's a universal issue. Anyway, next question. Everett Anderson asks, do you consider the Wii U next-gen or last-gen? Well, I'm happy to welcome it into the fold of Generation 8. I mean, you know, not every console has to be of the same power level and within the generation. I mean, the Wii was less powerful than the Xbox 360 and PS3, and it still sold just as well, sold better, in fact. So, power is not always the determining factor. 
So yeah, I'm, I'm quite content to consider the Wii U a next generation console. Or current generation, depending on how you look at it. I actually bought one. I actually bought a Wii U uh, just a couple of weeks ago now. And I've got to say, I'm really impressed with the controller. The controller is really, really nice. The games? Uh, well, alright. I'm sure they'll come. <laughs> there's a few games. There's, there's nothing that's utterly spectacular, though. But I expect over the next year or so, Nintendo will come into their own. We've got a new Zelda coming out soon, and there's probably some other first-party exclusive titles that will drive some sales. So the Wii U, you know, it's not going to set the world on fire with its graphical ability, but it's a, it's a nice little system. I was thinking, you know, I could use it for these bonus videos because, well, the web browser is quite good. It's got, the, you know, you've got a touch screen on the uh, the controller, and I can I can read comments with it. It'd be quite nice. Anyway, uh, that's that's one potential thing I might use it for. Maurizio Bro says, let's see how good you are at dodge pronunciation. Oh no. Hello da, dit is Xbox Ahoy, and dit is der Tweede Aflering van mein Black Ops 2 Waffenguide. <laughs> well I tried, alright. Actually it won't be wa won't be Waffenguide, the G's are funny in Dutch, I know that much. Uh, it'd be Waffenheids. Or oh, Waffenheids, I don't know, I'm not sure. DirectX950 asks, Hey Stu, just wondering, what font do you use in the bonus video thumbnails? It's the uh, the Black Ops 2 font. It's called Agency FB. There you go, there's a, a nice simple question. No no moral quandaries, no Dutch pronunciation. I like it. K4MRU7, or Camrel, says, What game this generation disappointed you the most? Well, there have been quite a few mildly disappointing games. Um... The Syndicate reboot was okay, but didn't really sort of rekindle the uh, the Syndicate franchise. Duke Nukem Forever, oh, I actually paid full price for that game. I don't know why. In retrospect, how could I have expected a good game out of it? I, mm, no, no, the, it, that game just isn't particularly good at all, which is a shame. Brink is another one. Um, I, again, I paid full price for Brink. I'm a sucker for these games, aren't I? It was supposed to be the next big thing, the COD killer, and it turns out that it wasn't actually all that much fun. Speaking of COD killers, there have been a, there have been a whole litany of them. I mean, you've got stuff like Medal of Honor, which have had two attempts to dethrone COD and failed both times. Although the single player on the first one was pretty nice. And um, what else? Homefront, which had some charm. Uh, Homefront had some good ideas. I really like Battle Commander mode, and I really w I hope something brings that back. Essentially, it was like Call of Duty transposed with the, the police star rating from Grand Theft Auto. So as you kill more people, you attract more heat. And more and more people are informed as to where you are. So when you get a streak, it's not just a question of being rewarded with a helicopter or something. It actually amps up in tension. Because you become a high priority target for your opponent. And they all flock to you. So it's, I mean, if, if they're careless, you can get more kills. But it's, it's, you've got to be on your toes. So I really like that. Homefront, yeah, all right, it wasn't a COD killer, but that's, that's a game that I actually was quite happy with on some fronts. The lobby system for it was dreadful, though. Oh, uh, let's, I'm looking through my old Amazon order history. I see Blur. Now, Blur was a disappointing game. Not because it was a bad game, not because I was disappointed in the game. It was just disappointing how poorly that game sold, because Blur was a fantastic multiplayer racer. Absolutely loved it. Just nobody plays it anymore, which is a shame. Oh, here's one that might be contentious. Brutal Legend. I loved the world. I love Team Schaefer. I love everything about this game, apart from the game. The the kind of the RTS element. It just wasn't very fun. Never mind, though. It was, like I say, it had charm, and sometimes that's enough. Uh, Wolfenstein, the reboot of Wolfenstein. They're trying it again with uh, Wolfenstein A New Order, which actually looks pretty stylish, but I'm guarded because the, well, the Wolfenstein from 2009, not particularly good. That's about it for disappointing games. In before, oh, what about Call of Duty, Stuart? Ah, uh, look, if you buy Call of Duty and you don't know what you're getting into, you're a fool. I have endured many emotions whilst playing Call of Duty, but disappointment or a lack of expectation is not one of them. Tom1080 asks, Have you ever played Medal of Honor Warfighter? If yes, how bad did you think it was? Well, hold up there, that's a bit of a loaded question. Uh, but, alright, look, Warfighter... Ah, uh, it wasn't the best. 
The single player was okay, but not as good as the first Medal of Honor. The first Medal of Honor actually had a really, really nice single player. It wasn't spectacular, but it, it was pretty good. There was one mission I remember quite fondly. Uh, the one before the Apache helicopters, where it's kind of a wonderful, wonderful sense of desperation. As you sort of, you're in Afghanistan, you hold up in this little mud village, and you've got waves and waves of Taliban coming at you, and you've only got like 600 bullets, and you're running out, you're on the last belt, and you've got like 30 bullets left, and you see 30 guys up on the hill, and you, you think, oh, God, we're all gonna die here. And then, right as you run out of ammunition, two Apaches fly overhead, and then boom. Now, I will admit the rest of the single player wasn't as spectacular, but still, it wasn't bad. And the multiplayer for the first Medal of Honor was okay as well. Just okay. Kind of like a cut down Battlefield multiplayer. Warfighter was kind of the same, just, I don't know. I don't think it was as good as the first one. More polished in some fronts, but I don't know, I don't know. I don't know what they were trying to do with it. Anyway, I've run out of footage, and the postman still hasn't been, so I'm still Grand Theft Autoless. So I might as well carry on with the black screen. I've got a few questions left to answer. I'll speed run through those. Ed Strip says, Stu, I got disappointing GCSE results. Where do I go next? Resit them, or not bother? Well, if they're good enough to get you into college, then that's good enough. Just buckle up and fly right, and don't mess up the next round. Once you've got your college education and uh, qualifications in place, your GCSEs simply won't matter. And likewise, if you go to university, once you get your degree, your A-levels, your GCSEs, completely inconsequential, really. Now that doesn't mean you shouldn't try at your GCSEs, it doesn't mean you shouldn't try at your A-levels if you're planning on going to university. But really, each stage of education is the key to unlocking the next stage of education, and ultimately, it's the key to unlocking the career path that you are after. So yeah, if you can progress, then progress. If you can't, then reset and try again. I'm sure that would have been more timely advice about a month ago, but never mind. It's me, James AJ, as Stu, Black Ops or Black Ops 2? Also, Bioshock Infinite or The Last of Us? I'd say Black Ops 2 over Black Ops 1. Treyarch did some good polish into the second one, and I think, I don't know. It's a preference, isn't it, really? But no, I prefer 2. Bioshock Infinite or The Last of Us? Now, that's a tough one. I love the floating city of Bioshock Infinite, I love the metaphor, I love the kind of, the deeper meaning to some stuff. Like the symbology in Bioshock Infinite is fantastic. There's a lot of bird, um, bird related symbolism, like, I mean obviously, you know, the city is in the clouds, so birds and flying is kind of a prevalent theme. But the name of the city, Columbia, you think it comes from Christopher Columbus, and it kind of maybe does. But what's more interesting is, Columbus is actually the Latin name for dove. Ah, huh. interesting. So I, I really love the themes and the world and the metaphors in Bioshock Infinite. Having said that, I prefer the gameplay in The Last of Us. I do love the detailed world as well. It's not steeped in metaphor like Bioshock Infinite is, but there are nice little touches that tell a story. You know, like you're rummaging through someone's house and there are little touches, there are artifacts that, that tell the tale of what happened to the family in question. Overall, I'd, I'd probably lean towards The Last of Us, I think. But I'm glad that I got to play both. What's a flute asks? Hey Stu, what's your opinion on the XCOM series? And would you consider it for Retro Ahoy? I'm a big fan of the XCOM series. I don't know about doing a video dedicated to it, but uh, I'll certainly slip it in whenever I get the chance. That lucky guy asks, Stu, do you really read all the comments from your videos? Not all, but most. A Ferguson 850 asks, Hi Stu, do you have a blacklist for commenters who have annoyed you? Uh, no, I do not. I, I do start to recognise some names, but normally in a positive sense. I quite like seeing people who, you know, have commented over the course of a couple of years still commenting on the videos. I like that. It's nice. I do have a few people blocked, but normally only in very, very egregious cases of uh, tomfoolery. Uh, my YouTube address book tells me I've got 48 people blocked, and I can guarantee most of them were for spam. Let's see, there's someone here called Adolf Hitler is awesome. Yeah, that's kind of the level. Or right, then last question. Uh, Scar High Dragon 87 or Dragon, I don't know, says, uh, have you ever been arrested for drunk driving? Because you drink a lot. All of my what? I mean, there are a couple of things wrong with this question. First and foremost, I don't hold a driving license, which means I don't own a car, which means I don't drive. Second, if I did hold a license and own a car and drove, I wouldn't drive drunk. 
And third to the point, I don't drink a lot at all. I probably have no more than a couple of pints a week. And there's nothing wrong with a bit of responsible enjoyment of alcohol. I mean, you know, if you want to. I mean, you don't have to. There's nothing wrong with being a non-drinker at all. Anyway, enough silly questions. Uh, that's it, I'm done. I'm still without Grand Theft Auto V, though. This is a disappointing state of affairs. It's 11 o'clock. No matter, I shall uh, render this video, upload it, and stare wistfully out of the window until the postman arrives. Let's talk videos for a bit. Um, if you missed it, I put up a video on my main channel yesterday, Monday. It is titled A Brief History of Video Games, and it is a 19 minute long whistle stop tour of some of the significant stops in video gaming history. I'm sure most of you have already seen it and uh, left a comment stating that I missed out one clearly important title. How could you miss that, Stu? It was so important. Anyway, next video is going to be a GTA 5 video. It's going to be a relatively light-hearted one, uh, nothing that's too complex, doesn't require too much in the way of research. So that one should be out on Friday. Uh, it could be Saturday if things get delayed, but I'm, I'm targeting Friday. After that, who knows? I'm actually quite enjoying this sort of freedom to do whatever I like. I can indulge my creative side and tick off some of these long-standing projects I've had sitting on my whiteboard for a while. If you like Call of Duty and only Call of Duty, don't fret too much though, because I probably will be doing a Ghost's Weapon Guide. But I will be engineering the series to last maybe two, three months at most. And then I can go back to, you know, experimentation. And then maybe Titanfall. Who knows? Maybe Destiny. I don't know! It's so exciting! Anyway, I'll see you on Friday, and I'll probably do another bonus footage in a week or so. So leave your comments, and I'll answer them next time. Until then, farewell.